The Pacific island nation of Tonga has virtually lost contact with the rest of the world after Saturday's volcanic eruption cut the country's internet cable. The full extent of the damage to the country remains unclear. New Zealand and Australia have sent military planes to survey this situation from above. Other flights to deliver aid are also planned. The underwater eruption on Saturday sent shockwaves across the Pacific. Tsunami warnings were issued for many countries as far away as Peru. And there, two people have drowned after unusually high waves hit the west coast of the Americas. This is the aftermath of the tsunami that hit the shorelines of Peru, over 10,000 kilometers away from the explosion in Tonga. The underwater eruption was so powerful that it was detected around the world. These satellite images show gas and ash being thrown thousands of meters into the Earth's atmosphere. Communication links to Tonga have been damaged, but the capital has sustained significant damage, says New Zealand's Prime Minister Jacinda Ardern. And this is where there's, of course, a, a, you know, an urgency here. We want to make sure that we're there on the ground as soon as possible. But for our Navy vessels, it will take several days to reach Tonga. Uh, we need to finally balance the need to get there quickly, but to make sure we also get the people and resources they need there as well. And in some cases, we have parts of Tonga we've just not even been able to establish communication. People in New Zealand said they received no warning of the tsunami, even though the volcano's explosion could be heard in some parts of the country. Many were still out on the water on their boats, which have suffered severe damage. Japan was also put on high alert. Thousands evacuated their homes, coming to shelters like this in order to stay safe. I heard the tsunami would be as high as a meter, but we really don't know how high it could reach. I thought it would be best to evacuate, so I came here. These fishermen assess the damage. Scenes echoed on coastlines across the Pacific region. Let's bring in Roger Maynard. He's a freelance correspondent uh, in Sydney. Roger, uh, Australia and New Zealand have both sent uh, surveillance planes to assess the damage from this uh, eruption. What are they equipped with and what will they be looking for? Well, the New Zealand Defence Force has sent an Orion aircraft from Auckland to carry out an aerial assessment and uh, any damage to low-lying islands. And here in Australia, the Minister of Foreign Affairs has announced that the Royal Australian Air Force is planning to undertake surveillance activity over the affected area too. The problem they face is the ash cloud, which has the potential to interfere with aircraft engines and, of course, severely reduce visibility. But both countries have had to deal with these sorts of crises in the past, so they do have the experience and the knowledge to monitor the aftermath to volcanic eruptions like this one. Well, communications with Tonga have been interrupted, as we've heard. But what are you hearing about the situation uh, on the island? Well, the exact toll from this major eruption is still far from clear. Information about the impact on Tonga and surrounding islands has lacked significant detail because of the underwater communications cable which links it with the outside world apparently being severed or at least badly damaged in the eruption. Uh, as a result, phone lines and internet activity have been interrupted. But what we do know has come from sources here in Australia who have had limited satellite communication with the islands. The uh, Tongan deputy head of mission here in Australia says there have been no confirmed deaths so far and only minimal damage to the coastal site of the capital, Nukalofa. However, there are several surrounding islands and coastal areas which have been out of contact and there's been no word from these more isolated parts. The New Zealand Prime Minister, Jacinda Ardern, has reported that a thick film of volcanic dust has enveloped much of the area, contaminating water supplies. Such has been the level of thick ash that many Tongans have been forced to wear face masks and drink bottled water. A video that's somehow been posted on social media described one family who'd been sheltering from a rain of volcanic ash and tiny pieces of rock that had turned the sky black. It's really bad, said an eyewitness, with locals being told to stay indoors and cover windows and entrances because of the danger. Mm. So Australia and New Zealand are already major aid donors to Tonga. Will they uh, be stepping up support now? Well, both countries will most certainly be offering food, manpower and technical support wherever it's needed. 
HMAS Adelaide, which is a helicopter docking ship and the largest vessel of its kind ever built for the Australian Navy, will reportedly be making its way to the area soon. The ship is currently here in Sydney and will sail to Brisbane to be loaded with supplies for Tonga. But it could take several days to get there, and so this will not be a quick and easy mission to complete. Hmm. How much extra support will be provided by Australia and New Zealand will depend on the scale of the emergency, which, as I say, is still largely hmm. unknown. But given the power of the eruption and the plume of ash climbing hundreds, if not thousands of metres into the air, according to some reports, the long-term impact is likely to be considerable. Roger Maynard there in Sydney for us. Thank you, Roger. Thank you. Well, let's bring in Shane Cronin. He's a volcanologist from the University of Auckland. Shane, uh, what can you tell us about this eruption? Just how powerful was it? Yeah, um, so, Gerhard, it was, uh, it was an extremely powerful event. And so uh, it was very short-lived. So when you compare it to other eruptions, it's quite difficult. But essentially, uh, during the, the short, um, uh, less than 10-minute long eruption, the power it released was very similar to that of the 1991 eruption of Pinatubo in the Philippines. And so it sent shock waves around the world, uh, literally, so pressure waves, actually, atmospheric pressure waves, they traveled around the world. And in, in some parts of the world on the other, uh, on the, uh, other side of the globe from, uh, from Tonga, they actually got two lots of shock waves, one uh, traveling one side of the globe and the other traveling around the other side of the globe. So it was remarkable from that perspective. So, also remarkable with these tsunami uh, generated. So what kind of damage, from your experience, what kind of damage uh, uh, can we expect there because we don't hear anything from Tonga because communication links are down? Yeah, we have actually heard some uh, some recent information now, uh, and the ash fall on, on Tonga has been uh, has been present, but not as severe as we were fearing. Um, so, and also the damage to, uh, from the tsunami uh, has been actually less severe than we were expecting. So far, no reports of fatalities. Mm. Um, so, um, it seems, uh, even though the eruption was extremely powerful, that. Uh, enormous damage has not yet uh, been reported in Tonga, and it, um, it's now just really waiting to see from the far-flung, small, low-lying islands whether anyone else has been affected. Mm. So this uh, volcano uh, began erupting intermittently in December, but uh, this major eruption seems to have come with no advance warning. Why is that? Yeah, well, partly the reason is this volcano is located 65 kilometres from any major population centre. Uh, so, and it's an, a very isolated. No one lives on the uh, on the volcanic island. It's extremely harsh environment. There is no coral reef around it. It's uh, battered by the seas and the elements. Uh, I've I've been there. I've uh, camped out on that island, and you know it's extremely difficult to keep uh, equipment running. So the only way to monitor a volcano like that is to use satellite methods, um, and um, they are often mostly reactionary rather than providing us a pre-warning. Shane Cronin there, a volcanologist in uh, Auckland. Thank you very much. Thanks for talking.